Pranona Maidiv Agus Falchero, Go Harris Scotsman, and Nalskal Nuaura, and Shaw. Um, Taluhar Waram, uh, Go Al Kancharling, uh, Ta and the Year Scholar, uh, Hashisha Olama Hitelike, Sabian Nikeg Nohasani, and the Lake Master Gamahoni, and Cast with Fudge. Our horse is already in Yerin, a gazinchen, run to the horse selling shaw. Shane, thank you. I guess, uh, Good afternoon, everyone, and I'd like to welcome you to the 17th Bar of the Land Lecture is dedicated to the memory of Barrow Donovan, um, who was from Leap County, Cork, and moved to the States in the 1970s. Um, he was the Irish language columnist for the Irish Echo for many years, and um, we are delighted to have a fellow, well, Colleen's grandparents were from Cork from Macroom, not so far from where Ara was from. So Scarabi Mila Fajro Khagliati Van Bonavan, I guess Ma Soyagro Anya Kajiga Varubara, Kanyani Gia Wagir, um Bas and Yen Kondai Karki Baro Gus, I guess Shkrivsha Alts and Irish Echo are fight Liant Alt Shak to you. Um, I'm delighted. Oh, come on. Tell her, Aaron, Falcha her, Colleen of Lane, um, your scholar, a guitar, a tannish and homey maliclia. It says, Wanta and his father, a wugus, the Colleen, I guess, for she a him. And so, and all skull new aura, Lian Gavila. I guess, and Chen, we she walk shakaherin. I guess, where she year him and all skull, uh, Kalash and the Hillskull of Balikliyas and Ejahas. I guess, in the nation, for she year him ella, a galash in the Trinaja Maliklia, a gesinchen for she a hem doctor actor as galash in the Trinaja Sibylian Fia a Kaharjik. So ta has more anum goal calling Leninu, a gismila falcher or the holy. Dr. Colin O'Flynn or Colin Flynn, um, a native of Wanta Long Island. Um, and a graduate of NYU. He started his journey with the Irish language in 1999 um, when he started studying Irish with me actually in Dublin on a summer program and subsequently two more courses um, before he graduated. He went to Donegal shortly after his graduation by himself and the natives, when he spoke Irish there, thought he was a local. So that's how fluent he was at that stage. Of course, he has since become a scholar of the Irish language and um, has worked extensively with, he is, at the moment, he is assistant, assistant professor of Irish and applied linguistics in Finther and Skalna Gaelica, Dublin City University. His teaching and research is focused on bilingualism in adults and children and in instructed second language acquisition as an avenue to bilingual competence. He holds degrees from Trinity College Dublin, PhD 2014 and a Master of Philosophy 2009, uh, University College Dublin, Higher Diploma in Education 2005 and his bachelor's degree from NYU in 2000. So I would like to welcome Colleen O'Flynn. Mila Falchero de Holy. Good morning, my good Falchero, because Luhar Aramsa, we live in art, the Liert Wara Igalwan, Yavida Fisa Do, a horch, the youth. To me, the Buet the Falchero Carol, as Carol a horch do, and Liert Shaw, a horch in Liana. 
agus is cúis áhas tú a ve caint liv an áit ar ich hiad dosis de harav ag will mas mór agam ar ar an obair lig ar in bara o donamhan leis na gaeilig ar chur chun kin inu áirach agus an áit chaile agus lena chosin mar ír waclean de chuid all scol nu áirach then you have high good war armor in Aras Glocksman, Tashinta Jas of a work of Jacta Rish or Laid Gafiru. Maradur Padrick, a hen of Imar, he had wound Chargaelic Ogum, I guess Dolma could war away, I guess a Kamita Sasta and Jesho Ogum of a torch lechta and this Mar Ear Scholar, I guess Mar Ear Walk named the Hudge. Our noia to my sister Foster and Jess Shaw of Elgum Lorch live from from the hour show from Taij at Tajenta Gumsa or all the Marty Foster in the Gaelic. I guess Minchanka Ella Marchin and Rudd of your bun egg Barra Hain. Our noia, I guess, is Lair or Higsha and Tawart a one left all the Marty Foster. I guess a Tawart the Higgin. The Didi at a golden of the Shingo Foil, Leheji Fadrik, I guess a full lackey here. And the Tawat Show at a full more defast the Anyar to Minchang. So I'm really very pleased to be here with you tonight uh, to give the uh, 2022 Barra of Donovan lecture. Um, I'm really grateful to Padrick or Carol, uh, my first teacher of Irish, uh, for this uh, invitation. Um, I, of course, have great respect for the work that Barrow Donovan did to promote the Irish language and to teach it, in fact, uh, in New York and in other places. Uh, and as a uh, past student of Padrick's and of New York University, uh, someone who spent a lot of time in Aris Glucksman or Glucksman Ireland House, uh, it's really nice to be back in your company, even if it is only virtually. Um, I'll, Get ready to share some slides here. Um, see if I can move this now for you. I hope you can see my slides now. I'm going to put them into presentation mode. I think I have to switch. Okay, so I hope you can see my first slide there. Ta tijil na kainchi show, erin kech lalan fola mori fasta, agas a roll in anyar tu min changacha. Or adult learners and their role in minority language revitalization. Um, there's quite a few topics that I'll cover in tonight's talk probably even more topics that I can't cover. Um, I have on my next slide here uh, a rough outline of the topics I'd like to discuss with you tonight. Um, there are, of course, many, many other topics I could include, uh, and I just simply won't have the time to. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions or delve into other uh, topics that aren't covered in this list in the question and answer period at the end. Um, so show a list of nice niche than a topic here, boy, I'm Lord Jarhu not. Um, I guess I know you to learn more of the other. I'm going to learn Jarhu. I think my file is going to not. I know you. Uh, the ingress is the question you are going to. On the hour show, no, hour to be other. I want to slash a topic show. Uh, egg Jeru, the kind show. So I'd just like to start uh, by outlining a few terms uh, that would be useful uh, in order to um, engage with tonight's talk. Mollar tu changa, ua nu changa, agas anyar tu changa. So language shift, language maintenance, and language revitalization. Um, so if we start with the first one of language shift, no molar to changa. Should the guest le molar to changa? No, uh, well, as um, in, a, in a great book, uh, 
entitled Language Maintenance by Anne Pauls. Um, she outlines uh, a definition for each of these terms, and I'll just briefly uh, go through them with you here. So language shift refers to the abandonment of one language for another. Uh, and this process does not result in the complete disappearance of the former. That would be language death, but it gradually disappears from a specific speech community or part thereof that finds itself in a contact situation. Okay. So Nirvinashtru Changa Agesh no Malatu Changa Shirtagesht na Gedein Pubble Changa Idro Changa Ella Durer Hela. Niamin and He Changa Gahomlon, Ach Imin Sha Asbail Namini, Ego Hicks in the Ari. The second topic, language maintenance, no Buenu Changa. Uh, this label is used to describe a number of different uh, scenarios and contexts, but broadly speaking, it refers to situations where there is some continuation of first language use, however minimal, over an extended period of time. Uh, for our purposes, then, language maintenance uh, is best described as the continued use or retention of a first language, which is a minority or heritage language in one or more spheres of language use. Uh, however, it may also refer to the steps taken to support the continued and hopefully increased use of the minority language in one or more language domains via language policy uh, strategies. Uh, finally, anyartu changa, or language revitalization. This term refers to uh, contexts in which, and I'm quoting here from Anne Paul's book, a language is in some state of endangerment or decline, ranging from near extinction in terms of usage to low levels of usage by the speech community, and attempts that are being made to increase its usage again. Uh, Pauls points out uh, the overlap between language revitalization and language maintenance uh, by saying that the latter term, language maintenance, is also applied to these situations but that in more recent uh, times, uh, the term language revival and language revitalization are being used rather than language maintenance. However, the distinction in terminology uh, is important because the challenges, both linguistic and sociolinguistic, involved in the process of language revitalization are much more immense than those in the case of language maintenance. Uh, so, Egos Anyarthi Hachanga, uh, to the kind of free cohex uh, and a will and changa atala have yohan no ala anyartu imiha could why us fail and fubble. Agus and differ is moe jershin agus cohex and a will buenu changa or bon. Now uh, egos buenu changa than changa wad nis bioha ta nis mo kind chorion agus bonichid usaj real to galore and anion gamaja will mahar and changa bonichid usaj asti. Um, so the distinction between these terms will become uh, somewhat relevant later in the talk, um, particularly in, 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 question, in relation to questions such as, uh, are we reviving a language or are we maintaining it? How much, for example, Irish is needed to say that the language is maintained or revitalized? And does the language have to be used to be maintained or revitalized? Now. Uh, language revitalization and maintenance efforts tend to focus on children and the education uh, system or educational policy. Clearly, children are an important cohort, and the emphasis on ensuring that they learn minority languages is not misplaced. Nonetheless, children are not the only ones learning minority languages. In every language revitalization context I'm aware of, Adult learners form a sizable portion of those actively engaged in learning the language in question. Indeed, adult learners probably have a clearer understanding of the import of their efforts to develop a proficiency in the language of their choice. In many cases, adult learners who attend uh, courses by choice are, at least to some extent, in a position to discriminate between course types, teachers, materials, etc., based on their own preferences. And in doing so, this may have an impact on their motivation and indeed ultimate success in language learning. In terms of uh, language maintenance and language revitalization policy in Ireland, 
uh, adult learners are indeed referenced, but in quite general terms, it must be said. For example, in Anstratish Vihebliyan uh, Velga, there are statements such as this. Tohertilu Jeshina the Rilifas, the Ersimlo and Changi or Olam, no Kurla and Agamas Kredga Loch. Jen her Klar Fold Magelica, a ve Credunihe, the Rinifasta, Agus Jenisha Frastel or Gok Level, Maran Klar Folma Changa Nashunta Coentihe. Rather, uh, a rather general statement about how adult learners will be catered for in language policy. Um, so, in case that um, quote in Irish uh, wasn't um, clear or understandable, what they've said in the Anstratish uh, Fihablian, the Novelga, uh, in relation to adult learners is additional opportunities will be afforded to adults interested in learning the language or, in, or increasing their ability to speak Irish. An accredited adult Irish language learning program catering for all levels will be recognized at the agreed national Irish language learning program, as the, excuse me, as the uh, agreed national Irish language learning program. So an important statement, but quite general. Okay. Uh, if you've been following um, the sociolinguistic literature on uh, Irish, um, you've probably come across the term new speakers or new Okay. So uh, this is a term that has come to the fore in the last 10 years or so in uh, sociolinguistic uh, research on Irish. And it came about really as an attempt to um, find uh, a label uh, for um, speakers of Irish who weren't brought up with the language and weren't brought up in the Gaeltacht, but for whom the language is um, uh, an integral part of their identity and indeed their uh, communicative repertoire. Um, and it was an attempt to move away from terms like non-native speaker or second language speaker. Okay. Now, uh, in the Irish context, the term has been used in, in many sociolinguistic contexts, but in the Irish context, it's been um, developed primarily by John Walsh and Bernadette O'Rourke, who defined it as such. Uh, by the broadest definition, most people in the Republic of Ireland who have gone through the Irish education system have been exposed to the language uh, have been exposed to the language and could be defined as new speakers. However, we define the term more specifically to include those individuals who acquired the language outside the home and who report that they use Irish with fluency, regularity, and commitment. Now, the crit criteria set out by Walsh and O'Rourke, uh, which include using Irish with fluency regularity and commitment separate new speakers from others who have perhaps gone through the same educational experiences, but not yet achieved the same level of proficiency and may not have the same desire to use the language regularly. Additionally, there is the implication in this literature that these new speakers represent a cohort that if supported by language planning efforts and an active speech community, should, or at least could, make a substantial contribution to the revitalization of Irish, since they are the largest group of language users. But the new speaker concept is only really applicable to those who have acquired the requisite level of proficiency in the language in order to become an active speaker. Researchers have, until recently, paid little attention to the process of becoming a new speaker. Nonetheless, uh, Salabank and Marquise, in a recent publication, uh, point out that, and I'm quoting here, where a language is not being passed on in the family or community, if language revitalization is desired, effective second language learning is necessary. Um, this is the area on which my own research has been focused over the last 10 years or so the process of learning a minority language as a second or additional language in adulthood. So in different mo with the idir nu a chainchori agus folamori na igas nu a chainchori tam ju chainchori rini a wulan changi aku agus a ta abulta i usaj agus a usaj in i gorilta in a steel lehua. Um 
Ar noia ni wanan in lipage in no an termishin ladini ata a mon folum ago fall no a danik stadlan ago folum agus nach will a level cri commerce aku as in tangi usage go real to is folum or eat and group vision and dram nach will in a gain chori real to go fall no new gain chori. When one looks at the relevant literature, there is clearly a gap, since few studies have looked specifically at the learning of Irish amongst adults, and indeed minority languages more generally. We therefore have very little insight into what connections may exist between learner motivation and identity in adult learners, and their desire to achieve particular levels of proficiency. Uh, the question of preferences for learning particular dialects, for example, of minority languages has also been largely ignored. However, any significant contribution by adult learners to the revitalization of Irish or minority languages more generally depends on them achieving a level of proficiency which would allow them to interact with, with other proficient speakers at various social, professional and educational levels. Okay, so Anish Folamori Fasta. Could you get a hot a guest to go and let Folamori Fasta? Well, uh, I'm a Jukainch and show her really a will creak Kurta Aku, uh, Lena Scolioc Erimu, uh, no Agasata Okni and a Jake Beach, no Martian, yeah, no Harishan. I'm a Jukainch Fasta, Erini, a will relate Changi Awan. Shall we have Aku Hanafin, Agade Changa, no Agade Changa? I guess Bajer, who will Changa Ella Aku. I guess Tashotau, the Marquini and Shay, who will Tahi egg Folamori faster, Nak will a Galore Folamori Ogre. I guess Chuck Majorashik and a Ganavershin or Ball. So adult second language learning is, of course, not uncommon. Adults learn additional languages in many contexts and for many reasons. However, it's argued in the relevant literatures that adult learners of minority languages may play a particularly important role in language planning, minority language maintenance, and reversing language shift. And one only has to look at the work of uh, Joshua Fishman uh, and Colin Baker uh, to, to confirm that. While it's not been ex uh, discussed explicitly in the literature, the same clearly applies to Irish. And we only have to look at the efforts of Conan Gaelica at the end of the 19th and the start of the 20th centuries to see the importance placed on adult learners of Irish. Adult learners of Irish were a main feature of the language revitalization program during the revival period, roughly from 1880 to 1922. Conan Gaelica was the most important of the language revival organizations during that period. And among, among its many activities, it had a vibrant program of language instruction for adults, which at one point uh, was over a thousand classes. Uh, Tommaso Fiach argues that although the impact of the League's language program was limited, in terms of the overall number of fluent speakers it produced, it uh, constituted what was probably the most organized system of adult education in Ireland up until that time. After Ireland gained independence, the Gaelic League's influence began to wane, and so too, too did the impact of its language revitalization program. The emphasis, of course, then turned to fostering Irish among school children in the new Irish education system. Marla Luima, the question of more on for the effect of our change on the Gaelic, Gaelic and Lin. Trabeshishin. I guess we are allayed the new one Kyle will a seal the Gaelic, not Rosasta, the upper Nagalashi Gaelic, no the Gaelic Navola Mori Fasta, the Fast Lotu. I guess Nyahishar who will stay here, Lishin Turimshin. So here's a, a quote from uh, the prolific writer Seamus O'Griana, uh, who was less than satisfied with um, Conan Gaelic's language program for adults and indeed the uh, speakers it produced. So he wrote in 1921, um, 
Neil the Kalashi Gaelaha, a dinu daddy la country Gaelic Yenu. Agashin here dover a highest conan the Gaelic Yenu, Matan Gaelic, La Harton Kin. Kaishiat Narodi at a Galdon Tossis, the Kalashi Gaelic, a squibber a hewn, Agas Tashat Marishgar. Is Rod Kotchianta, the Yeni Quig Hauru a Hau, a Kalashi Gaelic, Agas Egeru and Amishin, Gani the Valve, the Edhain a Hoshaku and Yenu. Uh, so uh, Ogrina was bothered by the fact that the, what was going on in the uh, Irish colleges at that time for, uh, in terms of teaching adults uh, wasn't, in his uh, view, satisfactory. Uh, he was bothered by the fact that uh, the methods that were being used and the, the amount of grammar being taught wasn't producing Irish speakers. Um, and indeed, he says at the end of that quote, it's... Uh, common for people to spend five summers at an Irish college and at the end of that time not be able to bless themselves in Irish. Ah, is few a Luan show can the Kholashti Konunagelika a bunny use a trave shishin, shishin Kholashti Olu, a dimmer Marlorin Galor Kholashti Ella. Chonaker more or he he negadeka agas negalpakta or kopla bala. Reduce her nakalashti show, fall the morty fast, the ejangle, ejagwal le pubble bio na changa, agas her moon le erfa ditha o he na changa, agas mosa na changa de. Aganam kierna, sprag uber at nakalashti show, the MS, which again second. Winch in the gale thought the hain, the lanst and the usad in the changa. So lagging little salira and scale a mock a soliers and ash javre lesh, neil she deliumpa, a false use a cruel stuff who needs Irish, as the lean yag is a car. So here we have um, little solira's account of the impact of at least one of these uh, summer colleges for adults on his own native Gortahork uh, in Donegal. So he says, uh, the national reawakening spearheaded by the Gaelic League and its outgrowth, Kalash um, de Olu, the Irish language college founded in Gorta Hork in Donegal in 1906, and the later establishment of the state in 1921, succeeded in significantly retarding the decline of Irish in my own area. Kalash de Olu and its visitors, professional well-to-do people from urban areas, scholars and academics, including Pierce, Casement, Agnes Farrelly, Henry Morris, J.L. Lloyd, and others, succeeded in giving Irish a new esteem, in some ways rivaling that of English, a position that it had not enjoyed for at least three centuries. The fact that Irish now had some kind of economic advantage was of central importance to this uh, readjustment in the local attitude. So um, we have two sides of the story here. Um, at the time, uh, uh, Seamus O'Brien and others were bothered by the fact that uh, Conor Nagelic and the movement more generally was too focused on uh, academic pursuits related to the Irish language. And it wasn't, uh, in their view, producing fluent speakers. However, as uh, O'Leary points out here, these colleges and their learners had a very beneficial uh, role to play in the areas in which they were founded. Now, minority languages in Europe have been the subject of concerted efforts uh, by governments and other groups to reverse the process of language shift in their jurisdictions. And one only has to look again at the work of Joshua Fishman and John Edwards, for example, for um, evidence of this. Now, these revival or maintenance programs have had varying degrees of success in their various contexts. However, in nearly all of these cases, and in others such as Basque context and that of Hebrew in Israel, there, have been, there has been an understanding, implicit or explicit, that adult second language learners play a necessary role in the revitalization efforts for minority languages. Adults who engage in learning a minority language normally include both those who had who have achieved uh, a limited proficiency level at an earlier age, particularly when it was learned as a second language at school, and new learners who have not previously ex been exposed to the language. Egos Nagelike, 
Egas na Gaelica or the Lay, ta finish on go will made already a dini fast, the Nacro and Gaelic Athur Skull, the war G Luna, no exemption, no the war Nacro Shitter Skull Satir, a Groshida Fall on the Gaelica or Kushna Exula, Agas ta Taija Denticum Hain or the Harbour Shaw. Um, tan scale Audi Egas Minchanga Ella Fasta, Shishin, Dini Naro and Minchanga, so the dog shit irrier he, Agas he had long asta. Now, if we zoom out a little bit uh, and have a look at uh, efforts in uh, other uh, minority language contexts, um, we can see uh, that adult learners have played an important role. Um, so it would be just useful to take a brief look at a couple of illustrated cases here where efforts have been made to reverse language shift via adult language provision. So Savratinveg, no, Wales, there, uh, where there has been more ex a more explicit approach to Welsh adult language learning than in other contexts, there have been well-organized courses for adult learners since the 1960s. By the mid-1970s, the number of classes for adult learners being run by the universities, further education colleges, educational authorities, and voluntary organizations had grown to over 370. In addition, and importantly, language planning policy had identified adult learners as key agents in arresting the decline of the number of Welsh speakers. Now, a significant development in the provision of Welsh instruction for adults was the establishment of intensive uh, Wilpen courses uh, in the 1970s, which were inspired by the open courses that were used in the revival of Hebrew in Israel. And in 2006, Welsh for Adults centres were established, six of them, in various regions uh, across the country to consolidate the broad range of Welsh language provision that existed and in order to raise standards. The success of the Welsh for Adults movement can be seen in the somewhat recent figures quoted by the Welsh government in 2013, which listed them as uh, 18,050 adult learners nationally being registered for classes in the 2011-2012 academic year. In the case of Scotland, uh, the story is somewhat different. Uh, as, as opposed to Wales, uh, Scotland uh, does not have the same history of an organized Gaelic provision for adults. Furthermore, the number of active uh, adult learners of Gaelic is far fewer than in the case of Wales. Uh, one not so recent estimate uh, from the 1990s uh, put the figure at approximately 8,000. Nonetheless, here too, there is a growing recognition of the importance of adult learners of the language. Uh, so in reference to the targets set out in the National Plan for Gaelic, 2007 to 2012, published by Borden and Gaelic, uh, MacLeod and colleagues argued that adult learners have a vital part to play in meeting the plan's target of 65,000 Gaelic speakers being recorded by the census of 2021. Now, I looked uh, a couple of days ago at the census figures, and they didn't quite meet that target, but they came close. Uh, I think the figures at 57,000 uh, being recorded um, in the 2021 census. Now, unlike the Welsh context, however, Adult Gaelic language provision has been described as fragmented, relying mainly on in evening classes, having no tutor training structure, and a shortage of intensive courses or flexible uh, learning opportunities. Open courses, or Ulpen courses, were introduced in Scotland in 2007 by an independent company called Jechel, and the courses have had moderate success. In a recent review of the effectiveness of the Ulpen uh, courses, it was found that over 85% of students reached or exceeded um, an A2 level of proficiency, that's basic user, uh, in the in terms of the CEFR, in spoken production after 160 or more hours of tuition. And a slightly lower figure of 75% or 76% reached or exceeded an A2 proficiency in spoken interaction after uh, the same amount of tuition. However, the study also found that new learners, that is people who hadn't studied Gaelic previously, were less likely to reach these levels of proficiency. 
So in light of the foregoing discussion, uh, it may be argued that those jurisdictions which explicit, explicitly incorporate provision for adult learners in their policies and strategies uh, for, for teaching uh, the language to adults are at an advantage in terms of language revitalization and maintenance. By doing so, they're increasing the chances that the minority language will be used in a greater number of contexts, provided adult learners reach the necessary level of proficiency to use the language beyond the classroom setting. Um, how are we for time? Um, yeah. okay. Now, um, as the eminent um, applied linguist who recently passed, Vivian Cook, points out, L2 learners can become L2 speakers but they're not the same thing. Um, there are a number of methods whereby someone who is learning the language may increase their chances of becoming uh, an L2 speaker, a second language speaker of the language, a regular user of the language. And these include traditional um, uh, methods such as uh, courses in the education system, classes for adults, distance learning, and self-directed learning. Of course, there are now newer methods, online self-directed learning, online chat groups, and social media that aid this process further. But the results of these various methods are mixed. Some people remain L2 learners, other become uh, 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 somewhat balanced bilinguals, uh, but don't make regular use of the language, and some indeed become new speakers or L2 speakers. Uh, there are questions surrounding whether all of these um, groups, learners, bilinguals, and indeed speakers, belong to different communities. So a question arises, do learners join, desire to join a particular group or community, or do they have other aims? And we'll come back to that later. But one of the um, issues that often comes to the fore when we talk about adult learners is this question of age. So I'll skip over this slide here. Um, maybe I won't, I'll come back to this, sorry. Um, we should also remember that um, not all learners uh, set out to become regular speakers of the language. So arguments have been made, and some of them backed by empirical research, that languages are not always learned for uh, communicative purposes. Uh, perhaps uh, the case of Irish uh, is not too difficult. So I've said elsewhere um, that learners with a cultural investment in the language uh, may not be motivated by the desire to integrate into the language communi speech community. Rather, they may seek the cultural experience associated with language learning and reinvesting in their cultural heritage. But as I started to say before, one of the things that comes to the fore when we talk about adult learners of minority languages is the so-called age factor. Okay. So Taturmi Eksula Salitri of Taija heard an Ishis Far Leshindarna Changa Olam, like a monhi level commercial market, a incartal level and kind of duhish. If we now show off of the bonus hajori SLA, Asian second language acquisition, a chart leshin turum gum rahan and fragment the kestishin. Her Ketag Folum, Ken Kohex in a will of Dimishan Egg Folum, Agus Gajena Haimana at the Egan Hurus at Changa. Ganea Wand and Scale Show at the Anta or the Hulian Show, off a Shan Tishkin Chatanishon, Nak mean and Buntasha, a hurter a lay folum or yoga on in Nak Kohex. Lady and Tiger go will Buntasha a parsh the oga, a dakala shallow and darn a Changa. Nura Harlin and Proshas Esiv Nagurha, Shishin Sawala, Nosa Fubble. Agus Nerevian and Kohik Shin Land Inkar, the Dark Kenyon, Agus and Tinker Moor Shin Shaswach, Harkrave Shaada. Um, the Gra Bonin Pashti, a go hex marshal, level commercia mark, Sadarna Changa, or Onan, nor Koanan, a la country, uh, Tuhush, no country, Tia Hain, and Sprakanga. At Larian and Taija Foster, Ganinan Pashti, a Tani Shinya, 
Il han kinnis gishtje na pashti oga lida bian an sprik hanga a folamaku mar aber skala awan gan mar an chagwala a hara biyaku les an changa tiva muid an shomaranga. Ta shisho auli the warger fejer les na skill an a literokta a taig pashti zehe changa a ve kaurok tiva sefrosias agus the warger will a skill an a kognia abi galor na jiru er hask. Olam and Dharma Changa, the linen ama, Hyoranta, a tarafal difa, Sashoma Ranga. So the old adage that younger equals better is not entirely true. Based on traditional folk wisdom, it is often claimed that children are better at learning languages. If we exclude the rare cases of children reared in isolation and the more common yet still comparatively rare case of congenially, uh, congenially deaf children, who learn a signed or spoken language later in life, one does not normally have to make this argument uh, in relation to first language acquisition. What people are usually referring to then is the ease with which a child, quote unquote, picks up a second language. In fact, the simple younger equals better position, which is supported by many parents and teachers, has made its way into the research literature. Uh, while this simplified position is often taken for granted, detailed analyses of the evidence available have concluded that the issue is very complex with more than just learners' age having an impact on their ultimate achievement in the target language. For this reason, it's been proposed that the numerous studies which present conflicting evidence and various contributing factors only allow us to be reasonably, reasonably sure of one thing. Younger learners have some long-term advantages over older learners particularly in naturalistic settings. The general trend in the findings of this research may be summarized in the following way. Um, younger learners outperform older learners in long-term naturalistic settings. However, in short-term naturalistic settings, older learners show a greater rate of progression over younger learners for a period of about a year, after which younger learners catch up and subsequently surpass the older learners. In formal school settings, however, the evidence is somewhat more complicated and it would appear to show the opposite trend. While younger learners have some advantage uh, in the long run in naturalistic settings, most scholars now agree that younger learners do not outperform their older counterparts in formal classroom settings. Any advantage demonstrated by the early start learners dissipates quickly with older learners catching up with them uh, within a few years. Um, now, another contributing factor here is uh, what are often uh, grouped together under the heading social psychological variables. So these variables are a major uh, uh, factor contributing to uh, the success uh, in second language learning. Learner attitude, motivation, and clear goals, such as sounding like a native speaker, for example, have been identified as contributing factors in almost all studies involving native-like attainment among late learners. Furthermore, learner identity and language acculturation patterns have been shown to influence a learner's degree of desired accentedness. Uh, I won't really have time to go into a great depth here, but what's important for us to highlight is the importance of such variables in uh, the specific context of attaining a high level of proficiency in a second or minority language. So what we can say about attitude and motivation amongst adult learners of minority languages uh, is somewhat limited, but important. Ta meij taeja ta jenta ar anawa sho beg gilo. Ta mehen an ye gilor taeja a yen ar kesht sho in inspraga e gaas folam ori fasta na gaelike. Agus play me na torhishin ar balbeg. Atashama le cause Gaelic na Holoban, Agus cause the Brattanisha or Dish. In the case of adult learners of Scottish Gaelic, uh, Alistair McCallum found that uh, the number one main reason for learning Gaelic amongst adults was, and I'm quoting here, I would be helping to keep the language alive. This was followed by, as a Scot or person living in Scotland, I feel I should be able to speak Gaelic. Um, and then the third main uh, 
uh, reason was I would be able to understand Gaelic literature. A very similar pattern was found in research conducted by another MacLeod uh, a few years later in 2010. However, a somewhat different motivational profile was found amongst learners in, a, uh, in another study by MacLeod uh, in 2015, where the number one reason for learning Gaelic was for personal growth and development. Um, now, uh, Baker et al. in an important study in 2011 found that adult learners of Welsh were strongly motivated by language reproduction in the family, with over 60% of their sample indicating that helping their children with their homework and speaking to their children in Welsh were major motivational factors for these learners. Uh, in the case of adult learners of Irish, uh, uh, a somewhat older study now uh, conducted in the early 80s by Devitt and colleagues found that uh, learners' main reason for enrolling in uh, a multimedia course named Anishik Zarish, which was broadcast on television, um, the, the main reasons were a desire to be able to speak the language, that was 25% of the sample, a sense of patriotism, 23% of the sample, to help children with their studies, 22% of the sample, and an interest in the language itself among 16% of the sample. Um, also, a sizable minority also expressed the desire to, and I'm quoting here, remedy a, self, a, a sense of inadequacy. More recently, myself and John Harris explored uh, motivations for learning Irish amongst a small yet diverse group of beginner learners of Irish. We found that the uh, L2 learners we interviewed demonstrated multiple motivations at the same time. Um, the different motivational categories we um, identified were labeled cultural and linguistic, integrative, instrumental, culture heritage related, goal oriented, and significant other related, that is a person's significant other partner or family member. Uh, we also found that most participants expressed a desire to acquire a spoken proficiency in the language, but that four out of the 12 had very modest goals in this connection and only wished to attain a very basic level of competency. More recently, uh, in my PhD research, I surveyed adult learners of Irish and found that they had a very strong um, integrative orientation towards the language. However, they did not, according to their own self-reported um, activities, they did not uh, engage in culturally integrative activities. They did not attend concerts, they didn't read Irish language literature, or even speak the language much outside the classroom. Nonetheless, I found that the language and learning the language were central to learners' group identity and self-concept. So, in sum, uh, these existing studies reveal strong associations between Irish or minority language learning and cultural patriotic and identity related factors among adults. However, the findings also raise questions regarding learners' desire to actively participate in the target language community. Many adult learners of minority languages indicate that they want to help maintain the language they're learning, but it's not clear to what extent they act on the desire beyond attending classes. Now I've listed here some challenges that arise out of this research that I've been talking about. There are a number of learners whose language learning goals are not clearly linked to becoming part of a traditional speech community. Uh, many second language speakers uh, are seen, oh, sorry, I should say, although second language speakers are seen to play an important role in strategies to increase the number of regular speakers of a minority language, say, for example, what was outlined in Anstratish Vihilin Vendetica, not all L2 learners are seeking to become L2 speakers. Accordingly, we'll have to account for the aspects of learning which relate to the self, self-concept, that is, when planning courses. We'll have to take into account the learners' goals, uh, target speech models that they might be interested in attaining, and possible or desired contexts for use. Um, 
We should also help learners recognize, create, and indeed seize opportunities for language use, which are uh, aligned with their self-image and language learning goals. So if we return now to the um, main uh, question addressed in this lecture, namely, uh, what the role of adult, uh, what is the, uh, the role of adult learners in language revival processes, we can give some very general answers. General mainly because there is not uh, enough research to say much, uh, to support much more than that. Um, if we take the case of Irish, uh, for example, most adults who become active learners of the language in, uh, in Ireland and elsewhere, have Irish as a subject at school. So uh, they're not complete beginners. Uh, and despite the fact that many of them claim to have little or no Irish when they start, they in fact do have some grounding in the language. And this previous learning will be of some general help to them when they start the relearning process and may indeed speed it up. But even those who do not have Irish when they start learning the language, their previous language learning experience um, and uh, existing language repertoire will aid them in the process. In both cases, their experience combined with the cognitive maturity that comes with adulthood and a presumably high level of motivation will allow them to make significant process, uh, sorry, progress towards learning the minority language in question. Um, age, therefore, is not a hindrance, and it may even be an advantage in the right circumstances. So, the heart of Ash, a cast war in the Lechka show, can roll a tag full more fast in an yard in the Tanyaka. Higlin couple of fragger ginner of the horcher. So, she'd ginner up a more nilgar or taige genta, a ligastu in the small nation again. A gas na gelica, the heart of a girl in Changi egg and war hudged all the more fast in our scholar, Niglan Tussahori eel. And Nanyon Ganyar could Wayaku, Naku Gaelicaku, with a Hushin Shield at Folama Leash. Rahi and Tai show Folama Hon Sahardipa, no Hokalesh, Fad and Frocious Agiru. A few he show Nakwil and Gaelicaku with a Hostile Shield or Ashter no Folama. Rahi Tahi Yella Folma Tanga, no in store Changa Ataku Hanafin Hon Sahardipa. Sadaha Safer, could I in Tahi show Taku? I guess an abbey of cogniach of yin a bini faster. I guess in spragu more le dolhan kin, santasach a yenu a wall in the sprakang. Ni bach an ish, Marshan. A bajer ger kudju of a son, ego hakes na aria. As mentioned earlier, adult learners' motivations for relearning a minority language are numerous, but many express a desire to keep the language alive. While this may not be their main reason for learning or relearning Irish or any other minority language, it will normally be part of their motivational profile. And as I've argued elsewhere uh, in my book, uh, which came out of my PhD pro uh, project, the motivation for adults to relearn Irish is self-related. That is, learning Irish and being an, uh, an Irish speaker will help them realize their ideal self. The available evidence does not allow us to say that all or most adult learners are um, actively working towards engaging with the wider minority speech community. Nonetheless, they certainly have the potential to do so. Adult learners, attitudes and motivations, as well as their, uh, the role they see for themselves in reversing language shift will likely determine uh, whether they achieve the appropriate level of proficiency, which will allow them to make the transition from learner to user. If they do this, um, they will increase the stock of language speakers of a threatened language, not only as parents who transmit the language to their children, but also as employees, neighbors, teachers, shop owners, etc and give the language a broader purpose and function for new and existing speakers. So, the Krieg occur le show or fad. A stoilum gajiglin chatarashig shanracha a hulama erona fascia. The vekamish mujhain marachi di yelimage, ni vekamish maratamuj. 
we only have to see the possibilities. Any questions? Well, it's got to now. Well, Kester be you going? Be she harvest some more. Um, a question about the Lila's community. Mm -hmm. I saw recently that Linda Irvine um, organizes classes in East Belfast, which is in the Lila's community. Do you know much about that? Yeah, actually, I was privileged to uh, speak alongside Linda Irvine at an event a couple of years ago in Kildare, uh, in which we were both asked to share our personal uh, journey um, with the Irish language. Um, so at that talk and through various other uh, events, I, I've heard a lot about what's going on. But I think, first of all, uh, what she's doing is absolutely amazing. That's one of the topics I couldn't even uh, fit into this talk, but I'm happy to talk about it. Um, there's been some interesting research on uh, teaching of Irish in Belfast across the two um, communities. Um, and I think there's a growing awareness amongst uh, at least some members of the loyalist, loyalist community, that uh, the Irish language belongs to everyone and that um, it, it, it's, it's not political uh, in, in nature. And so I think there is more, uh, a greater acceptance of Irish as part of our shared uh, heritage uh, in the North. So yes, I think the numbers, I, I know the numbers of learners uh, in the loyalist community are growing. I couldn't put a figure on that, but. Linda Irvine has done a tremendous amount um, to, to normalize Irish language learning and use amongst the loyalist community. Good. Okay. And Fedulat and Screen are great. I guess go back image of Vajala Dunadini. Okay. And Darkly or why Swan. Well, Shilam, any other questions? Kester Biela? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Rod's uh, chat and Shin Ocean. Um, uh, um, uh, yeah, just, uh, I'll just say one other thing. Uh, just that uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's uh, in the, the, the adult learner is overlooked uh, and, and generally considered as, as someone who just has, uh, who's learning Irish as, as a hobby uh, or, you know, uh, to, to engage socially with others. And uh, those are certainly valid uh, points. I mean, there are adult learners who, who engage in Irish language learning or minority language learning or any language learning simply because they have a general interest, they want to, um, you know, meet other people, they want to do something in the evening. Uh, and, uh, but I think we shouldn't overlook them as a potential uh, force, if you like, in language revitalization. And as I tried to point out uh, in this lecture that um, there's, there's nothing stopping really, uh, under the right circumstances, adult learners becoming highly proficient in the language and making a real contribution to Irish language revitalization and minority language revitalization more generally. Uh, so, um, you know, I, th I think um, not only should the learners themselves um, uh, be prepared to, 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 to make, um, you know, progress if, if that's what they want to do, but um, the Irish language uh, organizations that cater to them should, um, you know, think about them as, as a potential um, force for, for change. In terms of increasing the number of speakers. 
Well, you are certainly a great example of an adult learner and going to uh, great lengths altogether. So, Mavila Bihastig, a holding, uh, many thanks for joining us. I guess, Divsha Atalin Tranoninu, I guess, Tasalugun Gabekimeshev Eg Okajiela. Thank you all for attending and Many thanks to Colleen O'Flynn for joining us from Balahaklia from Dublin.